Welcome to Deluxe. Those fortunate few who live life in the gilded cage of celebrity get to enjoy a charmed existence that most people can only dream of. It's a fascinating world of privileges and excess. But the question is, are you in or are you out? A man who's no stranger to an extravagant lifestyle is New York's larger-than-life Donald Trump. A pugnacious property developer with a taste for celebrity, New Yorkers have embraced him as a symbol of their brash determination to pursue the good life, as is their natural born right. When Donald decided he wanted to launch his new tower in Dubai, what better way to do it than with one of his legendary parties? Nakheel, one of the world's largest real estate developers, has been working on this project with Trump and together they held a luxurious gala in Bel Air to introduce his latest real estate endeavour. Donald greeted a couple of hundred guests, including royalty such as His Excellency Sultan Ahmed bin Sulayem, as well as Hollywood's biggest stars. We're throwing it really to celebrate the great success of what we're doing in Dubai. It's been an amazing success. Everybody's talking about it, everybody's buying, and it's just been a lot of fun. And this was worth celebrating to be here for the launch of the Trump Tower in Dubai. So, um, you know, I hope to visit there one day, which I'm sure I will. I have not yet made it out to Dubai, but, you know, I'm just here in support of what's going on. Christina Aguilera was on hand to perform a set of songs for the partygoers, with Chris Wentz serving as DJ. Orlando Bloom jetted over from England, where he had just completed a hit run at a London East End theatre. Orlando was interested in coming tonight because of his desire to make his own movies. For the highly in-demand actor, tonight's party was an opportunity to meet some of Dubai's movers and shakers. As I've started to sort of try to develop some of my own work, um, I, uh, films that I want to get made, it just seemed like it was a good idea to sort of, uh, you know, I, I went to the film festival and it was fantastic. They had great films on. They were showing great films and I was thinking, well, you know, they've got a lot of everything, including a lot of money, and maybe they'll be interested in making a movie with me. Who knows? Lucy Liu also stopped by. She's not only enjoying her acting work, but is also doing humanitarian work for UNICEF. Donald Trump's party was a chance to appeal to the government of Dubai for help with her pet project for children. But Donald never let his focus slip from his main purpose for the night, to present his latest endeavour to the world. The Trump International Hotel and Tower in Dubai has already broken ground and is set to become one of the world's most luxurious hotels. Every little girl dreams of being a princess on her wedding day, but not many get to live out the dream of getting married like royalty. Liz Hurley became one of the luckiest of women when she married Aaron Nayar, an Indian businessman, at an opulent wedding in India. The couple were first married in England at a private civil ceremony at Sudley Castle in Winchcombe, 200 kilometres west of London. The wedding celebrations then moved to the Amade Bhavan Palace, the Maharaja of Jodhpur's palace turned luxury resort in the historic Indian city of Jodhpur in northwestern Rajasthan. The actress and her new husband took over the sprawling sandstone palace for their lavish wedding celebrations. Around 300 guests joined Liz Hurley and Aaron Nayar for the next three days. The couple stayed with the Maharaja of Jodhpur at his private residence in the palace, while their guests were divided between a wing in a luxury hotel and another five-star hotel in the city. Security was beefed up in the city of Jodhpur for the celebrations, with security guards stopping cars leading to the palace, while staff at the Marenga Fort were tight-lipped about the traditional Indian ceremony that took place. Staff at the hotel had spent weeks preparing for the celebrations, which included a special cricket lawn that had been created especially for a wedding cricket match. Hurley and Nayar had a traditional Indian Mahendi ceremony in which intricate henna designs were applied to the bride's hands a day before a lavish reception at the palace. The wedding guests dined on a luxurious banquet which included a mixture of traditional Indian cuisine, continental and international cuisines. 
Coming up, growing old disgracefully and a pop princess who isn't encouraging any bad behaviour. Many people try to lay claim to being a legendary party animal, but only one man can truly claim to have set the mould. While some may talk of the Hoff, it's the Hef who the world's serious party animals look up to. Hugh Hefner has become the living embodiment of the hedonistic lifestyle, a way of life that he pioneered and championed through his Playboy magazine. I think that one of the remarkable things about Playboy is that uh, the company is over 50 years old and it is uh, hotter today on a global level than ever before and uh, I think that so much of uh, the potential now because of the breaking down of the, the boundaries between the various countries and because of the advances in technology, I think the years immediately ahead are going to be the most exciting uh, ever for Playboy. And it's true to say that Hugh Hefner has become the granddaddy of all those who are chasing the hedonistic lifestyle. So when you've spent your life setting an example for footloose and fancy free bachelors of the world, what do you do when it comes time to celebrate your 79th birthday? You have a party, surrounded by a flock of sophisticated young minds. And when it's time for your 80th, how do you celebrate? Will you do it all again? Hugh Hefner found the time in his busy schedule to celebrate his 80th birthday with a traditional celebration. A cake, lots of friends, a chorus of happy birthday, and a crowd of adoring admirers, a quarter of his age. For the party, his legendary mansion was transformed into a glitzy hutch filled with hand-painted Playboy bunnies. Hef's hair is thinner now and grey, almost white in places. His hearing is gone in one ear and he has the slightest bit of trouble walking. But otherwise, the man dressed in black silk pyjamas and a scarlet silk jacket with black lapels shows few other signs that he's becoming an octogenarian. Well, I think part of it is the mystique of uh, Playboy and the Playboy Mansion, which, you know, goes back a lot of years. And, um, you know, our people manage to do it right, and the word, uh, word is out. I think when people come to a Playboy party, they come to have a very good time, and that kind of assures the fact that it is a very good time. The guest list to Hefner's birthday party included Hollywood's Oliver Stone and Owen Wilson, businessman celebrity Donald Trump and Paris Hilton, doing some very accurate impressions of a posing playmate. Hef has a lot to make him feel young. He lives with three young blonde girlfriends in his ornate mansion in Holmby Hills, California, with its free-ranging exotic birds, stone grotto and games room. He's still living the fantasy that his iconic brand has projected to men everywhere for the past 50 years. Another star to flex her business muscles is pop princess Kylie Minogue. Kylie has been topping the record charts around the world for the last 20 years, and like many others, she's taken time out of her busy music career to launch her business empire. Her first foray into fashion came with the launch of her signature underwear range in Australia and the UK. When Kylie and four scantily clad models took to the stage at the London launch of her Love Kylie lingerie range in 2003, she didn't really need to thank the clamouring press, who were clearly very happy to be there. I'd just like to thank all of you for coming out so early this morning, battling your way through the cold, and to the girls for braving it. <laughs> The range boasted plenty of delicate ribbon detailing, pretty trinkets and crystals. Every style in the line was personally approved by the star to make sure each item was perfect. Kylie herself has been quoted as saying that lingerie is like shoes and diamonds. A girl just can't have too many pairs of knickers and bras. At the launch of her new hosiery range, LK Legs, a year later, she was even more covered up once again leaving a string of professional underwear models to brave the probing telephoto lenses. And this time, she wasn't encouraging any bad behaviour. So, how did you enjoy that? I won't ask the gentleman. <laughs> I have wandering cameras. There were foxy fishnets and peekaboo suspenders on display, as well as new bras and knickers from the Love Kylie range. And Kylie wasn't about to stop there. Well, if you were here, you'd notice a beautiful scent in the air, which is a candle we've done. Um, we're going to have draw liners and go into sleepwear, so it will, it will be branching out. But uh, I think we're, we're taking our time and doing each step properly. 
After her serious cancer scare in 2005, Kylie's first step in returning to the celebrity spotlight was the launch of her delicate perfume, Darling, which was launched at a dazzling party overlooking Sydney Harbour in Australia. Guests sipped champagne and applauded their first glimpse of a resurgent Kylie. It was so much fun to work on something that wasn't music, that, that was its own. We all worked really hard to create something that didn't look like an album cover, um, mm. that had its own uh, its own sense, its own um, its own space, mm -hmm. and it was a lot of fun. After that, it was on to the world of home furnishings. Over the years, Kylie has developed quite a taste for interior decor and wanted to share her taste with the world. At the 2008 unveiling of her new home furnishings line, At Home with Kylie, she revealed that the range of home furnishings was a chance for her to fulfil a childhood passion. I've always loved fabrics, and I guess that's part of fashion and my love of fashion. The range features linen, towels, curtains, cushions and throws in organza, silks and taffetas. And as you'd expect, there are lashings of sequins and diamantes. If Hugh Hefner created the mould for the celebrity lifestyle, Paris Hilton has become the modern epitome of hedonism. I think a lot of people think the lifestyle she leads is pretty fun. Which I'm not gonna lie, you know it is. <laughs> you gotta go to a lot of fun things and meet a lot of interesting people. Paris has become famous for living out her lavish lifestyle in the pages of the celebrity gossip magazines. But it hasn't always been an easy ride. She's had her share of life's ups and downs, including her headline-grabbing stint in jail in 2007 for drink driving charges. I hope she's comfortable. And I hope she's learned a lesson outside of jail. You know, I feel very bad for her family. And I really think that, um, you know, partially it's her drive and that, that caused her to this, but it's also the media. You know, just hold your head up and, you know, learn from the mistakes and, and don't let nobody bring you down and may God bless you. Along the way, Paris has tried her hand at a number of careers, starting with her acting and singing, as well as leveraging her famous name to spruik a variety of products and events. She's even found time to launch various fragrances and fashion ranges. Well, we're going to be doing 400 of these shops, and we're very excited. We're actually opening the first ones in Hamburg, in the airport, and Manchester. And we're going to be doing them in the Middle East, in Tokyo, all over Asia. Um, you know, just keep expanding. It's it's very exciting. The shops are really beautiful. They're actually done by Danish designers, and um, they are just totally my style. And it's just so exciting because this is like a dream come true. This is always what I wanted. Yet, despite her busy social life, she's never been afraid to roll up her sleeves and get down to work. I'm a workaholic. I love to work, and I travel around the world every day. So every day I'm working one of my brands all at once, so it all works together, I integrate everything. Paris rose to fame with best friend Nicole Ritchie. Together the pair starred in the groundbreaking reality TV show, The Simple Life, sharing the wisdom of their privileged backgrounds with those less fortunate. But after four seasons of The Simple Life, Paris and Nicole's friendship couldn't handle the pressure of their combined fame, and they stopped being friends. Never one to shy away from the cameras, Paris found a novel way to replace Nicole and find a new best friend. How did she do it? By starring in another reality TV show, based on her quest to find a new best friend, and called I Want to Be Paris's New Best Friend. I just want someone I can trust, someone I can tell anything to and know it's not going to get out, and someone who's a good person in their heart. After all this, who knows what she'll try her hand at next. But one thing you can be sure of is that the world's press will be watching with bated breath. Coming up, we go to a party to mark a milestone and take off with a high-flying star. A rapper who's not afraid to splash his cash is hip-hop empresario Sean Diddy Coombs. Sean's love of extravagant parties has cemented his reputation as a party animal extraordinaire. 
At his annual white party, held at the Nicky Beach Club in sultry Saint-Tropez on the French Riviera, only 400 of Sean's closest friends got to party in all white. The beach party kicked off a day before a VIP dinner and party celebrating his new fragrance, Unforgivable, on RM Elegant. Every year I come to Saint-Tropez with my family on vacation. Um, it, it's a place that's beautiful. Um, it's nothing like this place in the whole wide world. And, you know, I, I think this is the perfect place to celebrate the success of Unforgivable. The hip hopper won praise from many of his friends on board the yacht for being an inspiration to them all. And Sean's guests were just as glowing in their admiration of their generous host. We've been friends for quite a while. I'm friends with his mother as well as he is, and I, I just think he's an incredible person, and I guess he thinks I'm one too. <laughs> oh, everything about him, just general fabulousness. I tell you, he got good taste, you know. He, he comes out of struggle, he, he gives back to his community, builds a lot of things for a lot of people. And why does he do it? Me, you know, I like being number one. After he'd finished partying with his best friends, it was time to get down to business for Diddy. There was another reason that he'd come to the Riviera. Diddy was there to announce his plans to become a movie star. And where better to announce this than at the Cannes Film Festival? While he may have made his name in music, Diddy won't be satisfied until he masters movies too. The Cannes Film Festival proved to be the ideal place for Diddy to practice working the red carpet and high life party circuit. I'm here um, as a future movie star in training. You know, like when you get ready to go to the Marines or something, you go to boot camp, or when you get ready for, for football, you go to training camp. This is like um, training camp for future um, super movie stars. So. You know, I, I did my red carpet drills. Um, I went and, you know, did my premiere drills, my paparazzi drills. Diddy had done his homework, observing how the biggest stars in the world operated. I studied the great ones. I observed them as they walked the red carpets and dealt with interviews like, you know, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie, and um, Clint Eastwood, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Diddy was keen to show what he'd learned from the stars to really take your time. Like when you, when you observe all of the, um, the, the legendary movie stars, they take their time. They, 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 when they're on the red carpet or they're in, in um, you know, and they're, they're in that element, they're always just breathing and taking their time and they're not rushing, you know what I'm saying? Diddy also announced his plans to audition for the part of the first black James Bond, should it ever materialize, and he recently received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yeah, I just got my star on Hollywood Walk of Fame, and it was like, it was an incredible honor for me, you know. It was two decades ago that Elton John sang, I'm Still Standing, but nowadays he's toned down the high life to live a longer life. Elton, once famous for his partying excess, is still partying hard, although these days his energy is all natural. And to celebrate the milestone of his 60th birthday, Elton threw one of his legendary splashes at New York's Madison Square Garden. The flamboyant singer has a history of attracting some of the world's biggest celebrities to his extravagant parties, and this year was no exception. With Donatella Versace, Pierce Brosnan, Bette Midler, and Ozzy Osbourne, just to name a few, attending the celebrations. Every time I see him, I kiss him. And I, uh, I wish him well, because he's a real shining light in our, in, in our lives, and we, we adore him. I think he's got happiness. I think he's got a great life, great music, great friends, come through a lot of trials and tribulations, loved by everybody. He's just extraordinary. He's got he's got what we call staying power, you know. I mean, I saw him first when I was 14 years old at the American School in London, wearing those great big platform heels. Wearing rose-tinted glasses and a black tailcoat, John sat at his piano and played more than 30 hit songs from a career spanning four decades. He began with 60 Years On after an introduction by former U.S. President Bill Clinton. John told the elated crowd filled with supporters and friends, including his lyricist partner Bernie Taupin, that the arena was the obvious choice to ring in his birthday, with a record-breaking 60th concert there. 
Tolpen joined comedians Whoopi Goldberg and Robin Williams on stage to sing Happy Birthday. The crowd swayed and sang along to many of his songs, including Honky Cat, Benny and the Jets, Rocket Man, Sad Songs Say So Much, and I guess that's why they call it the blues. John displayed none of the outrageous costumes and wigs that were once his trademark, a penchant that Robin Williams joked made John a man who used to make Liberace look Amish. The concert ended with Your Song, which in 1971 gave John his first hit single in a career that eventually sold more than 200 million albums worldwide. John Travolta has always wanted to fly. The avid pilot and Oscar-nominated star of movies from Greece to Pulp Fiction turned his dream into a reality when he learned to fly 747 jumbo jets at Boeing headquarters in Seattle. Now the Australian airline Qantas has officially named John as their ambassador at large. Shortly after being awarded his golden airplane wings, John couldn't contain his emotions and let his heart speak about his achievement. I would say that it's at least along the two Oscar nominations that I've received in my career. It's right up there with that, if not uh, a little more special. The high-flying actor revealed that he's wanted to be a pilot since he was four years old. John began taking flying lessons at the age of 16 and earned his jet pilot's license in 1981. Since then, he's logged 5,000 hours of flying time. The airlines uh, need some support and positive thinking at this time uh, because I still think that the airlines offer the most amazing way to communicate, to transport, and and uh, for business and personal reasons around the world. So we have to eventually turn it around. And uh, I think that uh, injecting a spirit of friendship along the lines of the the, the themes that Qantas already brings to, to life is a, is a good thing. Travolta said his new plans came from a tour he took to Australia to promote his action thriller Swordfish. When Travolta flew to Australia to promote the film on his Boeing 707, he discovered that the plane had been originally owned by Qantas. On arrival in Australia, the plane caused quite a stir at the airline. Travolta asked to meet with Qantas CEO Jeff Dixon and told him if Qantas would return his 1960s plane to its original colours, he would fly around the world to promote the airline. So, in his freshly painted 707, dubbed the Jet Clipper Ella, John took to the air from Los Angeles and headed to Auckland, New Zealand to begin the Ten Nations Spirit of Friendship Tour. Whether you're born into wealth or the fickle hand of fate has tapped you on the shoulder, if you get to enjoy a lavish lifestyle, you should always be grateful for your good fortune.